Hello class, welcome to day 2B of our um, lecture, uh, CNA program. Um, today we're going to talk about safety and body mechanics, which is chapter 7 in your textbook. So again, open to chapter 7, section 2. Um, in the nursing homes, in all facilities, um, there are lots of accidents that happen, but the most um, important accident, that the most frequent accident is fall. So we're going to talk more about fall prevention and other types of uh, safety and body mechanics in this chapter. It's very important that nursing assistants, um, health um, nursing staff generally um, be proactive when um, dealing with residents, when transferring, when working, um, you know, make everything, make every effort to avoid falls. They fall a lot, you know, as they get older, their bones are weaker, uh, muscles um, weaker, and their gait is weak. So they fall uh, frequently. You know, so you have to know which residents are at risk of fall so that you um, be proactive in keeping an eye on them um, more. Um, make sure that you tidy the rooms and remove things that could cause fall in the room. Um, keep things that they need within reach before you leave the room. Um, make sure that the call lights are within reach. They can be able to call for help if they need help. Um, you're transferring them from the bed to the wheelchair, make sure the wheelchair is locked. Um, put bed in the lowest position. Uh, make sure their clothing fit properly. Remove rugs or mats, things that could make them fall uh, out of the way. Um, if you have handrails or loose um, items, just report it to the maintenance department or to your charge nurse so that they can be fixed. Um, you know, keep walkers and canes nearby. Do not move furnitures around um, without their permission. Um, so make sure areas are well lit, especially going to the bathroom in case they need to go to the bathroom in the night. Uh, you don't want them walking in the dark and then they trip over something. Um, so fall is a big concern in the nursing home. Um, most of the accidents in the nursing home in the facility are related to falls, like we said earlier. So falls are often caused by unsafe environments, loss of abilities, diseases, um, sicknesses, muscle weakness, poor vision, or disorientation. Um, so remember these guidelines for identifying residents. Um, one of the issues that also happens a lot in nursing home is, you know, a mistaken identity. Always identify your residents before providing care, uh, especially before serving food. When you bring the tray out of the cart before you serve the resident, make sure you ask them to state their name and then you check the tray for the um, diet card which, which, which should have their name on it and make sure that it's the right person. You know, failure to identify residents can lead to illness or even death so be very careful if you um, have a resident uh, be very careful also when um, to prevent burns and, uh, and hot items water temperature should be no more than 105 degrees um, it's very important before you give them a bath or any kind of washing you check the water temperature first make sure it's you know reasonable then have them check the water before you uh, use the water on them it might be too hot it might be too cold make sure if you're using a dryer um, it, you set it to a low, low setting so it will not burn them um, don't just serve them very hot um, coffee or tea let it sit and cool off a little bit Okay. Always serve them drinks when they are seated, not when they are standing up, because they 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 are less likely to spill uh, when they are sitting down than when they are standing up. So read through that. 
poison prevention, uh, keep all items that may be poisonous away from their reach, um, especially those that are disoriented. Do not leave cleaning products in the residence room. Um, check expiration dates of food before you serve them. Check residence drawers to make sure that they don't have expired items in there. Um, make sure that uh, there is proper ventilation and chemical um, when chemical products are used. Okay, choking prevention. You always have to uh, make sure before you feed them. Use you. you Raise the head of the bed up to about 90 degrees, 75 to 90 degrees. They should be in a sitting position when they're eating. They should not be reclining because they can choke like uh, if they're reclining. Um, feed them slowly. Never rush a resident when you're feeding them. Alternate between food and water. So you give them a spoon of food. You give them a sip of water so that you know they can swallow it better. Cut food into small pieces. Don't serve them big chunks of uh, meat or you know uh, food items. Report uh, to the nurse if you think a resident would you know be, will be helped by uh, softer foods or thickened liquid. If you see that they're not able to chew, just you know talk to the charge nurse or talk to the dietitian about your concerns. Make sure they have dentures on and they, and the dentures fit well before they eat. Um, Always be aware of residents swallowing precautions. Um, some people might have aspiration precaution, which means they choke easily. So be careful about that. Cuts and other injuries. Um, do not leave sharp objects around. Um, uh, prevent skin tear when dressing the residents by guiding clothes over their body. Um, always approach them slowly. When moving residents in a wheelchair, protect their arm. Uh, when you're going through a door, you don't want the elbow, you know, to hit the door or hit the frame when you're, you know, going by. Um, always push the wheelchair forward. Um, wheelchair should face forward in the elevator. Uh, do not run in the, in the facility. Do not put your hand uh, into a bed or anywhere else without looking first. Um, you never know if there's a needle that the nurse uh, left behind um, mistakenly. Um, so always check or the you know the bed may be soiled so you don't want to put your hand in anything uh, without knowing what it is uh, always look first okay um, safety data sheet this is a sheet that provides information on the safe use of um, uh, chemicals as well as uh, emergency steps to take in case somebody um, mistakenly f splash the chemicals on their face or spray or they swallow it. Um, there is a, a federal agency called the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA by, uh, for short, responsible for the safety of employees at work. So OSHA requires that all dangerous chemicals have a safety data sheet. Now, these sheets are placed where all staff can see them. Um, some of the information you can find on the safety data sheet, the chemical ingredients of the product, dangers of the product, uh, protective items to be worn when using those products, those chemicals, how to use and clean up the chemical, emergency response if the product splashes or is swallowed. Um, safe handling of the, of the chemical, how to store it properly, and how to uh, dispose it as well. You know, this is um, when, you're, when you have to deal with shops and biohazards, a nursing assistant should follow these uh, safety guidelines when using shops and biohazard containers. Always put on your gloves before touching sharp container. Keep hands clear of the opening of the container, you know, keep the container, uh, carry the, back, the container, you know, uh, uh, hold it at the bottom of the container. Don't hold it from the top because sharp objects might be close to the top and then you might get stuck. Request that the container be, re be replaced when the container is like three quarter full. Remove gloves and wash hands um, after, you know, putting anything into a sharps container. Um, Again, use biohazard container or bag for anything uh, that's contaminated. Wear gloves, um, you know, remove gloves and wash your hands. 
again, nothing assistant, you know, face, faces risk of injury. So using, um, here we're talking about body mechanics. So using proper body, me body mechanics helps to prevent injuries. Uh, one thing you will um, come across is that uh, nursing have one of the highest rates of back back injuries of any profession. I used to think that uh, construction workers, you know, had the highest risk for back injury. But if you think of, you know, as a nurse, uh, nursing assistant, what you do uh, on a daily basis, you're bending and, and constantly bending to do this and bending to do that, bending to make a bed, uh, bending to turn, bending to dress up. Uh, that strains the body um, over a period. So. Um, when you're bending or when you have to move a uh, heavy object or lift the resident or transfer them, you have to use proper body mechanics. So that's what we're going to talk about in the next um, section. So like we said, uh, good body mechanics helps uh, save energy and prevent injury and muscle strain. When muscles are used correctly to push and lift objects uh, or people, it reduces the risk of injury. Okay, so take a look at um, body alignment. Um, you should know like the basic body alignment. So your body should be aligned. Um, you should know the center of gravity of the object you're lifting. You know, that's the middle of the object is usually the center of gravity. Then your base of support, uh, that means that you should, um, you know, kind of um, spread your legs and be balanced um, for maximum support when you're lifting. So we talked about alignment, base of support, and center of gravity. Now let's look at this picture here. We have um, um, the wrong way to lift an object and the proper way. So the picture on the left, you can see that the gentleman is using his back um, spinal cord to lift that object so the pressure of what he's lifting is on his back and he's far away from the object which is very strenuous so the best way to lift is uh, the picture on the right um, you have to go close to the object that you're lifting um, you know have your base of support uh, wide enough um, bend from the knees and not from the back so use the leg, leg and thigh muscles to do the lifting and not the back. So there are lots of activities that will require lifting and moving. Um, you're going to lift a resident, you're going to pick up a laundry bag, you're going to carry their luggage, you're going to take out trash, clean the floor, um, move them from one room to another room. Um, so so guidelines when performing your daily activities to re, to uh, you know while use body use body use proper body mechanic uh, raise the head of the sorry raise the bed to a safe walking level especially if you're making a bed um, you want to bring the bed as high up as possible so you're closer to the bed stand close to an object stand with a wide base of support like we said earlier. Push your slide objects rather than lifting it, you know, if you're able to push, then push. Use the strong muscles in the thigh, bend at the knee. You know, avoid twisting or chopping movement. Do not lift with one hand. Hold, uh, hold objects close to your body. Avoid bending and reaching. Get help, you know, if you can't uh, lift. Even when you think sometimes you can lift that resident by yourself or transfer them, it's always better to get help. Okay. Talk to the resident before moving so you can you know, prompt them and signal them. For example, you know, if you're transferring them, um, uh, let's say you want to help them to stand. Um, so you can transfer them from bed to the wheelchair. You can say at the count of three, Miss Susie, we're going to stand. That way she also will start you know, moving her body up to a standing position, which makes it lighter for you. Um, restraints. Um, restraint is when you um, either physically or with a chemical, with a medication, restrain somebody's movement. Um, 
that used to happen a lot you know years ago but recently most facilities do not use restraint anymore because uh, you know it's a dignity issue you know they were you know the residents feel like they were in prison and um, so over time restraint have really reduced so restraint use has declined in facilities and laws have been passed restricting the use um, of restraint due to abuse of caregivers um, one thing um, if you I used to see nursing assistant at my job they um, put a resident in the bed and cover them all the way to the neck um, and talk, talk in the uh, cover sheet in such a way that the resident cannot get out of bed and that's a restraint uh, so side rails and geriatric chairs with tray tables attached to them uh, may be considered restraint so kind of be careful and follow your facilities policy um, pay attention to this here make sure that if a restraint is in use that it has a doctor's order you know restraints can never be used without a doctor's order so some of the problems that has happened with restraint um, bruises uh, it causes pressure also risk of suffocation or strangulation entrapment sometimes causes pneumonia it affects blood circulation st uh, stress blood clots poor appetite and dehydration sometimes they pee on themselves or it might cause urinary tract infection constipation so many things falls fracture um, but you know, so so there are lots of problems with restraint you know social isolation loss of self-esteem and so on and so forth so uh, like we said earlier restraint has been reduced in facilities and so on so facilities came up with creative ideas to help avoid the need for restraints um, so these are called restraint alternatives so let's talk about some restraint alternatives um, find out what is it that is making them one don't want to stay in one place or making them restless uh, maybe you just need to make sure before you leave the room um, the call lights are within reach things that they use frequently are within reach um, take them to the bathroom frequently um, take them for a walk um, you know keep an eye on them visit them visit their room frequently um, see if they want to watch TV um, so there are so many ways you can encourage your residents um, and redirect them and, and to avoid the use of restraint so again if this restraint if restraint is in use make sure you follow the care plan um, sometimes you might have to um, take off the re restraint every few hours um, the charging us will let you know guidelines when oxygen is oxygen is in use again we're talking about safety in uh, long-term care or in, or in facilities some of the, some of the issues that causes um, accidents in the facility um, again when somebody is using oxygen um, some definitions here combustion means the process of burning flammable means something that can easily ignite uh, fire and burn quickly so nursing assistant do not turn off or adjust oxygen levels that's for the charge nurse to do if you think that the resident is not getting enough oxygen just talk to the charge nurse about it when someone is using oxygen in the room there must be a sign that says no smoking oxygen is in use um, on the door so that um, if um, visitors come in and they, and they smoke and they need to see the sign and, and know that they're not supposed to be smoking uh, in that room remove flammable I, uh, I, items away from the area do not allow candles lighters near the oxygen tank check the nasal area the tubing that connects to the nose uh, make sure that it's on properly uh, if it's not then you know let the charge nurse know IV therapy sometimes when a resident is on IV um, uh, for those of you 
that may not be familiar, IV means intravenous, we call it drip uh, back home. Um, when they're on that drip uh, medication, so the tube is connected to the arm. Um, sometimes um, it may be through the sleeve of their shirt or their gown. And sometimes you're trying to change the gown and it's stuck because the IV line went through the sleeve. So you need to call the charge nurse to disconnect it before uh, you can provide care. And also always observe the sites of the um, IV uh, to see if it's bleeding or swollen so you can report to the, char to the charge nurse. Check the machine. Sometimes the machine might beep because there's a kink or there's an overflow. Again, just make sure you report those to the charge nurse. Fire safety and um, the meaning of race and pass. So you have to know fire safety protocol in your facility. Wherever you are, wherever you work, know what to do when there's a fire. Know where the fire extinguisher is located. Know all your exits around you. Okay. So many potential causes of fire in a facility. Um, smoking is, you know, one of it. Um, damaged electrical cords, electrical equipment, overloaded electric plug, oxygen use, uh, flammable liquid, stack of papers. Okay. So again, guidelines for fire prevention. Stay with a resident who smokes. You should never leave them to smoke by themselves. Check ashtrays for cigarettes or matches. You know, make sure they don't smoke and then, you know, um, leave some of the uh, cigarette butt with light on in the trash can so that could then uh, catch fire. Um, put out burning cigarettes. Make sure the cigarettes or smoke materials do not fall anywhere. Make sure that there are no hot ashes and so on. If you smell gas, um, report that to the charge nurse. Okay. So, um... When you're um, throughout the country, you know, across all industries, especially in nursing, always remember race. Race is the protocol for dealing with fire. R-A-C-E. Okay. So R stands for rescue the resident in danger. Activate or alert or alarm is A uh, or call 911. The C stands for contain the fire by closing all doors and windows. Then E stands for extinguish the fire. Um, now, some you know books will say E also stands for exit. If you are not able to extinguish the fire, if the fire is too big, then you need to exit the building. So, again. Uh, let's assume you walk into a room and the, uh, there's a fire in the trash can, a small fire. The first thing to do is to remove the resident from that room, which is your R, rescue. As you're removing the resident, you're calling for help. You're saying, help, help, fire, somebody call 911. Or you pull the fire alarm. Okay, close the door, close all windows. By doing so, um, air doesn't go into the room, you know, fire fits on the air. Um, and then E means go get the fire extinguisher. If it's a small fire, like a trash can level of uh, fire, you can put the fire out with the extinguisher. If it is a large fire, then you kind of make sure everybody's out of the area and wait for 911 to come do their job. PASS. So PASS is the acronym for how to use the fire extinguisher. So the way you use the fire extinguisher and um, I guess your instructor will demonstrate this or when next time you come to class just ask um, one of your instructors to demonstrate um, how to use the fire extinguisher. But um, they all designed the same way. There's a pin at the top that you know, 
is there to prevent uh, the handle from being squeezed. You have to pull that pin out first before you can use it. So the P pull the pin, then you know there's a tube where the the material comes out of the can to extinguish the fire. You have to pull the tube and aim it. So aim at the base of the fire. That's the A. The first S means to squeeze the handle. Um, because you remove the pin, you can now squeeze the handle to put out the fire. Then S, the second S means to sweep, you know, sweep back and forth at the base of the fire. Okay. So we said earlier, you have to know the general procedure to follow in case of fire and remain calm, um, make sure everybody is safe and make sure there's a count that of, uh, there's a census of everyone to make sure that nobody was left behind. Again, report anything suspicious um, that you see. Uh, keep valuable things at home. Uh, do not um, lock up residence valuables. Uh, if a visitor or staff member makes you uneasy, do not leave the resident alone with the person. Sometimes there are family members that come in that will come and hurt the resident. Um, some of them want them to die sooner. Maybe they have something they're supposed to inherit after their death or they just mean it happens a lot um, in homes so be careful keep an eye on your resident you know. so that's the end of uh, day 2b